The second problem that we said a supercomputer would face is information. How does it know what is the production possibilities of all the firms that are out there? How does it know the actual resources that are available? And how does it know what people's preferences are? It could issue surveys, it could send out inspectors, but all of this wastes the economy's resources compared to if there's like a cheap way to get them for free. Moreover, there might be incentives people have to lie and misrepresent what they have. Like they might want to tell a supercomputer that they have, you know, very intense preferences for something that they really don't care that much about because they do still sort of want it. Or they might say that they don't have very efficient production technologies. They might say that it's very hard work to generate a little bit of output simply so the computer doesn't assign them much work to do. Maybe, you know, some people are not great. Um, or object to the tyranny of the central computer. A market doesn't have this issue. With a market, everyone who knows their, like every piece of information that's important is known by the person who's making decisions about how to use it, okay? So let's, take about, let's think about production technologies. Firms know how to make stuff efficiently, we assume, okay, in this model. And maybe that's a wrong assumption, but that's what we're assuming. And anyway, if they don't, like, then the supercomputer doesn't know any better than them because it has to survey and get the inf information from them, maybe. So suppose firms know how to make stuff efficiently. To maximize profits, they need to take, they need to make best use of their own information. And so that information is translated into action, like, costlessly. Nobody has to gather it because the people who have it are the ones who are also making the decisions about how to use it. Same with people's preferences. A supercomputer is going to have to know everyone's preferences and figure out how to allocate goods. But with a market, everyone knows their own preferences and individually solves their own optimization problem, which is just a fancy way of saying they're the ones who decide how best to satisfy their preferences. They're the ones who make the decisions about what to buy, what to sell. Okay. Nobody else has to know that information because it's all communicated like the, all the relevant information is communicated via prices, okay? And so the market outcome has one, this is the first major advantage it has over the central planning, which is that all the information is spread out over the economy and it uses that information at like the level of where it lives and nobody else has to gather it. It's gathered instead and translated into action via prices, okay? Which means, for example, if a lot of people have preferences such that they all want the same thing that bids up the price and that information tells firms to uh, make more of it and they decide how much more to make using their own information about their marginal costs. They don't need to know more information than that. Uh, there's a very famous uh, paper by um, Friedrich Hayek uh, called The Use of Knowledge in Society that's sort of about this problem. And he talks about, imagine... Um, a company, I believe it's like a firm that, or a mine that's producing tin. Okay. And suppose, uh, somewhere else deep in the economy, somebody finds a new and important use for tin. So the demand for tin goes up. Okay. That price communicates to this mine that society wants more tin society will pay like the willingness to pay for tin has gone up and so this mine doesn't know why and it doesn't need to know why it just knows what its costs are and it knows that it can make more profit if it starts making more tin on the other hand suppose one of the other mines closes down like they use up all their mine or they use up all their tin they're out of tin that's a supply shock and that's also going to raise the price of tin Okay, and now we need this other, this original mine to basically step in and fill the gap. The initial mine doesn't know that that's why the price rose. It just knows that society values its tin more than it used to. It knows the price and it knows its costs, and so it raises its production. The price is like the one piece of information it needs to know, which is sort of like here's a number about how much society values this thing. You figure out, knowing your costs, how much you want to supply. Okay, and if you can't supply enough, you know, the price might keep going up, for example, and then other people will get the information to either economize on their use, because on the other side of the equation, we've got consumers who are deciding, ooh, now that tin is more expensive, do I really need this, like, tin siding on my house or something? Maybe I'll switch to a different metal. All of this happens 
decentralized and so on. And like they all, all the information and processing, I'm sorry, all of the knowledge is sort of inside people's heads and it doesn't need to be collected anywhere. The price is instead the vehicle through which it gets translated to other people who need to know. 